Hey there, Plot Fanatics, and welcome to Just Write Already, the short show for new authors to create pop fiction that means something. It's filled with tips, real life stories, and good advice, but just for today. We're helping you to break free, get better, and write wilder so that readers can't put your story down, even if, well, maybe they should. Dominic is an unqualified travel associate who is born to serve cats. Katie is our benevolent beauty layperson who's also gluten free, but yeah, not really. <laughs> We're novel writers and story lovers who really need to stop talking and just get back to writing. So today we're talking about plot. It's kind of a continuation of uh, the, the last episode. Now we're getting into the eight-part story structure. So Katie, uh, let's, let's do an overview. Very quickly, what is the eight parts? And then we can break them down just a little bit more. Uh, can you list for us the eight key points that every, every story should probably have? Yeah, first, um, these eight story points are a shortened version of 15 that you can get if you read the book Save the Cat. So Save the Cat is a book that every writer should definitely read at some point. Definitely um, agree. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, it lists out 15 story points, but really the eight are the ones that I use regularly. And you can look at the 15 if you want some more detail. So they are uh, number one. Uh, is to set up your hero's status quo. So what does life look like for them at the beginning of the story? Number two is called upsetting the apple cart um, or the inciting incident. And that is something that happens where the hero, um, something interrupts the hero's status quo, right? Mm -hmm. And then the third one is the hero can't return to the status quo. So that's your end of act one. Something has happened from that inciting incident that means the hero can no longer go back. Act two, we're going to start with uh, point number four, which is the hero makes a plan to defeat the bad guy, to somehow get his life back to normal, what have you. Then we're going to have the midpoint. And this is going to be the point in the story where the pace increases, um, things get really fast, the, the stakes heighten, something happens that's going to get your reader's adrenaline rushing at that point. Uh, t uh, number seven, <laughs> number six is all hope is lost. So this is going to be the point where the hero, something happens, maybe the, the bad guy has a minor victory, right? And the hero just feels like all hope is lost and there's nothing they can do. But all hope is not lost because at point number seven is where the hero realizes they can make a new plan. And the last one is the hero either succeeds or fails in achieving his or her goal. Fantastic. You know what I love about um, the an eight point plot structure like this is it gets rid of that feeling or that sense that you know, the interesting is really fun and we just got to slog through the middle to get to the end. Basically, if you're having a hard time or you're slogging through the middle, uh, your readers will too. And they're going to put it down and they're not going to get to the end. So for those who are afraid that, oh, this is too formulaic and it's, you know, it's I'm going to lose all my originality. It's no, no, no. It's not like that. This, these are basic beats that you need to go through. And one of the points that I like about, you know, even if you don't have an antagonist, or an actual bad guy. It could just be a bad situation. Or it could be somebody who's just wants something different than your main character. Or maybe your own internal flaw or something. Um, it's really important to have a false victory, like you said. And then um, either like a false victory or a point of failure. Because the hero makes a plan. That plan must fail. You know? And because they have to learn to dig deeper. That They never dig. That's kind of the fun thing is characters never dig deep enough. So there's a failing point. Oh no, now what do I got to do? Build a team, get a new enchanted sword, get to the actual star base, whatever it is. And then, you know, you know, and then they become the character they're supposed to be. Yeah. And once you've mastered these eight story points as well, um, you know, you can mess with them, right? You can break the rules a little bit, but you can't break the rules if you don't know the rules. And with something along the lines of, like 300,000 books being published per month. If you don't have a really compelling story, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's plenty of other things that readers can pick up and they just won't finish. So you have to have some kind of a structure to it. Yeah, yeah. And and I think it's, it's really easy to tell when somebody has a good plot or a good structure to their story. You can tell almost immediately. 
as you start reading, there are certain key points, certain beats, certain expectations, and you can pick up somebody else's novel and it won't have those, or they're trying to do it their own way and they skip some, or they move too fast through them. And you're like, well, if I can't trust you in this first act, I don't think you're going to handle the rest of them, you know, in a very satisfying way. But for example, I love um, Rick Riordan, right? And his, mm-hmm. his series, they're, I, I think they're perfectly plotted and they're mm-hmm. incredibly formulaic, but that's actually why you love them because you know what to look forward to and the characters all have to, you know, just because it's a formula doesn't stop the characters from actually being uh, put through the hardest possible experience so that they can actually grow. So it doesn't take away from actually creating great characters. Yeah, well, you got to remember that, um, you know, the formula and or the rules are not restrictive, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, you could say, if you're a physicist, right, you could say, ah, I just don't like the laws of nature. They're so restrictive and unoriginal. Mm-hmm. But if you learn how to use the laws of nature, you can make an airplane or a rocket ship and you can fly. And I'd say that the same thing applies right here. The laws are not restrictive. They set you free to make something incredible. Absolutely. So let's go back through those eight points and let's talk a little bit more about each one. So what was the first one again? Yeah. So the first one was the status quo. And I think that it might, you know, it might help to uh, use an example from a story that most people probably know. So I'll just like breeze through, um, breeze through it using The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. If you haven't read this book, I highly recommend you go read it because I can't illustrate the points without giving some spoilers. So just fair warning, but I think most of you have probably read it. It's been around for a hundred years. It's like, yeah, we can, we can do spoilers now. <laughs> if you haven't read it by now, then. <laughs> it's your fault. You're, that's your fault. <laughs> so number one, the status quo for The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, right? The Pevensey kids are staying at the professor's house in the country because of the bombings that are going on in London. That's where they are. That's what they're doing. They're playing hide and seek. They're getting into trouble. That's what their day-to-day life is like. Upsetting the apple cart. Lucy goes into the wardrobe and finds Narnia. That would upset your status quo. (laughs) Then the point where the heroes can't go back to the status quo um, would be, you know, when all four Pevensey kids, they go into the wardrobe, um, they find Narnia, but then Edmund runs away and joins the White Witch. Any time before that, they could have gone back and pretended that they had never found Narnia, that they didn't know about Narnia. But once Edmund runs away, he's been kidnapped by the White Witch. Mm -hmm. They can't just go back to their status quo until they figure out how to get Edmund back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no way to stop this story now. It's like I'm Mm -hmm. thinking of maybe, um, like what would be another one? Treasure Island, for example. You have Jim Hawkins set up in his his status quo is just, um, what was the name of that inn? I can't remember anymore, but that's his life. His dad's passed on. His mom is uh, poor and they'll take anybody they can get. And that is normal. And then there's this weird figure who shows up. He manages to run away with uh, what seems like a map. And then he shares it with a couple of influential people. And they say, this is a treasure map. We need to go figure it out. And they get on the boat. There's no way now that he can actually go back to the quiet little life just running a hill. Well, especially because all the bad guys are coming after him. They're ready to kill him because he's he's stolen the thing. So that, yeah. those few opening points, like if you don't have those, eh, it's it's hard to it's hard to keep someone motivated to keep reading because they don't know who we're talking about, where they are starting from, and then why you know why they they have to. That's kind of the point. Is it's like with um, maybe Lord of the Rings, right? You have Frodo just having fun, reading, kind of doing nothing in Hobbiton. That's the status quo. And then Gandalf shows up and says, here, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Or is it secret? Is it safe? And uh, here's the ring. And now there's riders coming. You have to leave. That's it. The choice is out of your hands. You know, I think that's kind of part of the act one situation is on their own. Bilbo would never have left Mm -hmm. until the ship sailed. He's like, that's it. I can't stay. I would. Who would I be if I stayed? And so he runs. So there's like a, there's a, there's like a no choice sort of feeling. Yeah, exactly. And that's really the whole point of your act one, which is your first three story points. 
The entire point of Act 1 is to set up your hero, your goal, and your obstacle. So at the very least, your Act 1 has to do that. It's kind of like showing them, that here's the cliff. Okay, it's very dangerous. And then you push them off it. <laughs> exactly. Now learn to fly. <laughs> this is what we have to do with our heroes. We do it with fictional people so that we don't end up doing it with real people because that would be bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay, so that's Act 1. Let's go into, into Act 2. Yeah, so in Act 2, the heroes make a plan. So at this point, uh, Peter, Susan, and Lucy, they realize they have to get Edmund back somehow. Uh, and the beavers tell them that maybe they could go find this guy, Aslan, to help them do that. So they make a plan to go and find him. Now, after that, we get to the midpoint. Now, remember, the midpoint is the story where the tensions go up. So... Yeah. The first signs of spring start coming, meaning the White Witch's power is starting to wane because Aslan is coming back. What happens because of this is that the White Witch becomes a lot more aggressive. She starts sending the wolves out after them. Um, she starts moving faster. She's going to try to kill Edmund. So the tension of the story goes up. And at this point, it's like, OK, I, I have to read the rest of the book in one sitting because it's mm -hmm. just that exciting. <laughs> Yeah, and this is taking us to that that midpoint there. So that's this second act is not where things slow down. I like how you you point out this is where things pick up. So as bad as you thought it was in that first act, if you then go well, the midpoint is where they have to trek across the lands, monster of the week, you know, crisis of the day solved. Keep moving, and it and that's where we tend to run into the slog. And it's like no no no, that's not how it should go. This is where the pace needs to pick up. Maybe introduce a new character. Or maybe the bad guy or the situation gets worse and the clock starts ticking and you're out of time or you, you know you have to start training and then your teacher dies it's like uh now what you know so the pressure does have to go up not go down i think that's a really important point so after we get the midpoint you know the tensions increased then we have the end of act two which is all hope is lost and this one's pretty obvious in the lion the witch in the wardrobe because that's when the white witch kills aslan everyone's kind of just sad for like a couple chapters after that the narnians are battling with the white witch and they just it looks like they're gonna lose everything's bad there's no hope for anyone mm -hmm. and that's the point whatever that first plan was created has to fail because the hero bilbo frodo right at that point has no idea how big things can get or how big or involved the world is so whatever plan that's created it has to make sense character has to believe in it but it can't be the only plan that's going to sustain you through the whole story it has to fail because the character has to grow mm -hmm. Yeah, if the first plan succeeds, then the story is probably Flops. too short. <laughs> <laughs> or then it's, it's a maybe... short story or a novella, and that's just where it's meant to, you know, meant to stay. But exactly. you've got to make your character bleed and, and feel that despair and like all his lost moments. So sorry, keep going. That's, I think, the next point there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the next plot going into Act 3, right, is the hero makes a new plan. So in, in Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe, Aslan comes back to life and he takes uh, Susan and Lucy and he goes to gather reinforcements. Uh, so all of a sudden we've, we've got a new plan, we've got new hope, we've got help coming for Peter and Edmund. And, you know, maybe there's now it's just going to be the showdown, right? The big fight's going to happen and the hero is either going to succeed or fail, which is your last beat in the story. Hero succeeds or fails and then, you know, we wrap things up after that. Dear listeners, we are now out of time. So if you've got questions, please go ahead. Uh, either drop them in the comments or send them to us. We're thinking about maybe unpacking these, you know, each one of these plot points into their own episode because there's so much that can be talked about. And if you haven't yet read Save the Cat, check that out. And I love the Save the Cat writes a novel. Uh, that is just phenomenal as well. Thanks for skipping your karaoke lessons to listen in today. Half the time, we don't know what we're going to say, but hey, it's got to be good because your writing life could depend well, on it. Well, not really, but one of these episodes might just explode your brain with an idea. You'll write a story and completely change your life. Some of these certainly did for us. So, hey, let us know what you think and, you know, rate us five stars. Or, you know, Or we'll put gluten into your shampoo. <laughs> Subscribe to this podcast at catholicauthor.us. Now that we're done, you can begin. Just, Just right, right already. already. <laughs>
one of these days we'll get it in sync. <laughs>